Good morning and welcome back to the Madcap Hat Studio. Today we have a very nice project for a change and I think you're gonna love this. So this is my fall cap that I've made to go with my favorite jean jacket. And I'm gonna show you how to make a winter version of this out of polar fleece, but you can definitely use lighter fabric and make one just like mine. I'm also excited to say that we will have this available on our website as a digital download pattern for a very nominal charge, just to cover the cost of the paying the fellow to digitize for us. So the pattern will also include how to make the flower. I'm not gonna cover that today, but I will go into that um, trimmings for hats on a later video. So here's my fall hat. Let me show you the one that I made for winter. And this is my winter hat. And this is what we're going to make today. We're gonna to make a slouchy cap with visor and we're going to make it from polar fleece, but by all means, you can use any sort of knit fabric, a lighter weight fabric. I'll give you instructions on how to adjust the pattern. So I'm also very excited that we're almost at a thousand subscribers. And that's very humbling as we've only started uploading our videos in the last few months. So thank you so much. We're going to have a gift certificate or something from our website as a giveaway on our next video. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, let's go inside and let's learn how to make a beautiful slouchy cap with a visor. Come on in. And it all starts with the pattern and here it is for the top. So I'm using polar fleece, but the cap you saw at the beginning, I was a lighter jacquard knit. Um, what I've done is I've added a half an inch to my head size, which is 22 and a half inches. So the width of my pattern is 23 inches. And that makes this piece is for the top here that I'm showing you. Uh, it's going to have a hem on one end. And this is the piece that I would call the insert. So you can make that out of any contrasting fabric or the same fabric. And we'll talk about that later on in the video as well. It's exactly the same uh, width, but the depth is two inches or five centimeters. And then the bottom piece, it's 3.25 inches or eight and a half centimeters deep. And again, it's the same width, 23 inches. And 23 inches is 58.5 centimeters. Now the bottom piece, it actually goes inside of the hat as well. So there's just a small amount that shows on the outside. So this helps give you that double layer of protection over your ears when you're wearing this in cooler weather. And it lifts the visor up as well so that the edge of the visor is not sitting at the very edge of the hat. It's very comfortable on your forehead. The visor pattern is a bit complicated. I'll leave it up for you to look at and you can freeze the video here if you want to replicate my drawing. This is a little bit different than the visor that we did last week with the sun, the sun visor. This one's not quite as big. So this is a hat that's meant to be worn uh, in the cooler weather. So our visor is going to keep our glasses dry if you wear glasses like I do and just help keep the weather off of your face. So the curve is not quite as intense as the sun visor curve. It's a gentle curve. So using my handy washable marker, I am just outlining my visor from the pattern onto my sew-in extra heavyweight interfacing stabilizer. 
Uh, you don't want to use fusible for this project if you're using fleece because you're just going to have maybe a problem with something melting. And I'm going to sew my um, stabilizer onto the wrong side of the top of my visor. And I've just sort of picked a place on this print, which is lovely snowflakes. And uh, where I'm going to have a nice print on the other side once I cut that out. So I've gone all the way around with my sewing, so I'll be able to see that. And now I'm going to use a, a second piece of stabilizer. I always do because I like a nice firm visor. And I'm going to use black underneath. So I've got my right sides together. My snowflakes and my black are right sides together. And then it's sandwiched in between the two stabilizers. And now I'm just going to sew on top of that first seam that I did and on top of my trace line. And I'm sewing through all four layers now and I'm just sewing on that outside curve. I'm gonna leave that inside curve open for now, but because I have a sewing line there, I'm gonna be able to see where to sew everything together once I turn it right side out. Now I'm going to trim close to, but on the outside of that seam that I just sewed and get rid of all that extra. If you have a serger, the next step would be to just go where I've just trimmed away with your serger and go in about a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch into the actual visor. But if you don't have a serger, just notch the curve and do your seam uh, inside of my trace line and my sewing line. And there you can see my serge. And it turns, it, it turns right side out beautifully when you use the serger. I'm gonna do a top stitch now along that edge. So I'm just clipping it so that I've got the uh, seam right at the outside of the, of the visor. So the top and the bottom are evenly matched. Seam is nice and, and beautiful and flat. And then I'm gonna sew on that inner curve as well. And after I finish, I'll trim away any of the extra fabric on the inside on the outside of the uh, closing seam that I make. So here I am doing that top stitching and you'll see I'm using my magnet sewing guide, which is my best friend in my sewing world. I strongly recommend that you get one if you don't have one. And now I'm gonna close that inside curve. I'm sewing through all four layers now. And I'm following that very first line of sewing that I made when I sewed the interfacing to this snowflake piece. And when I'm finished trimming, I'm going to cut the center notch because I find it's so much easier to do that when the visor's already made. So I'm trimming my center notch and I'll just cut away those two pointy ends. And they're gonna disappear in my seam anyway. When I cut a pattern from a piece of printed fleece like this one, sometimes I like to mix up the pattern pieces so that the pieces aren't sewn together where the pattern continues. Mixing it up makes it more defined that this is a three section hat. It's just my personal preference. So I'm going to notch the center of the two smaller pieces right now and those are the pieces that I'm going to use to create a headband for my visor. And so what's nice about that is it's, it's like a contained piece that, that has the visor and that piece actually has two layers of fleece. So those two layers will be uh, deep enough to cover my ears or your ears when you make the hat. So when you pull down the hat, you're going to have a nice cozy band of warmth around your ears, especially if you're using uh, polar fleece like me. And like all of my um, pieces that go around my head, I like to top stitch that seam down so it's not bulky. 
bulky seams in a hat make the hat feel smaller and they're just uncomfortable. And now I'll top stitch on the other piece. So the smaller piece is going to go on the top of the visor. So I'm going to sew it onto the visor first. I've just sort of clipped it in the center where the notches are to start. And I like to use the visor on top and the smaller piece on the bottom because the visor's got four layers of sewing already. So that helps prevent it from stretching out of shape. And now I'm just gonna go back and sew the other side. I usually start in the middle, as you see, and go out to one edge and then come back and do the other. I'm using a narrow seam as well because I just want to tack it on and I'm being careful not to stretch that insert piece while I'm sewing it onto the visor. And I'll just check to make sure that I didn't catch anything and make a fold that I don't want to be there. So now I'm going to sew the bottom onto the visor and insert piece. And I'm going to take a wider seam now so that I can just bury inside my piece all of those seams that came before. I'm being very careful that I don't let this fabric on the bottom get folded or tucked under. Um, of course, I should be using pins. So by all means, you should pin or clip these pieces together. It'll certainly make it go faster. Uh, after 36 years, sometimes I forget to pin. I should have pinned and clipped this together. Sorry about that. And also, I should mention too that the visor is actually sandwiched in between that insert and the bottom piece. So it looks good. So now I'm ready to sew those two raw edges together. Give it a little clip and you can pin or clip it all the way around. And you're going to notice that you're getting a little bit of that bottom piece on the outside of your hat, of the visor part of your hat, and most of it is on the inside. But that little bit at the bottom helps lift that visor up off of the edge of the hat so it's not pressing right against your forehead and it's quite comfortable. And there we have the visor portion of our hat, of our cap. Now I'm going to do the top part of the cap. I'm going to do the back seam the same way as I did the seam on the insert and the bottom piece. That means I'm going to do some um, top stitching on either side of the seam so that my seam is gonna lie perfectly flat. Now, a little part of that seam is gonna end up being the edge of our elastic casing as well. And that's what we're gonna to get to next. Perfect. So now we're gonna hem the top and we'll turn down part of that edge to make the hem. I'm gonna uh, go around it with a serger. No finishing edge is really required because fleece doesn't fray, especially if you're using fleece. So there's my serge. I have a serger, so I used my serger. And now I'm going to make a hem that's about two centimeters or three quarters of an inch deep. It's a personal thing. If you don't want the hat to be so baggy at the top, you can make the hem bigger. This hem is going to be the casing for the elastic that we're going to use to close the top. 
And if we're gonna make a ponytail hat, then we're gonna put the elastic in with a toggle so the top can be open and closed. And we did this before on some other projects. So we're going to um, do this again. And what we're going to do is once we've made that casing, we're going to open up some of the seam, the back seam, to give us a place to put the elastic in. And we're going to reinforce it. We're going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, make that really strong um, ab above the presser foot afterwards and just along the edge there because we're going to open up on the inside of the hat that little part of the hem that we're just encasing now. So that means the seam is going to stay strong, but we're going to have an opening that has uh, stitching up on either side, like almost like a, a straight stitch buttonhole that we can put our elastic in. And I'm just going around and you can use a measure if you want to, to make that perfect hem. I'm just following my surging and now I'm going to do that little close to the seam stitch back and forth back and forth to do the the top part of my reinforcing for where I'm going to open up to make that that casing opening and where I am going to open to create that uh, opening for my elastic to go in is in between those two back and forth um, seams that I made at the very top of the hat and just at the edge of the hem so I'm using my handy Lee Valley tool seam ripper and I'm carefully opening up the inside part of that hem of uh, the back seam that's in the hem and that's where I'm going to feed my elastic through using my handy bodkin boy oh boy these tools are fabulous so I'll just feed the elastic through if I was going to make a ponytail hat I might use a different kind of elastic and a, a toggle but this one is a quarter inch elastic and you can also use eighth of an inch elastic. And once I get the elastic through, I just start gathering up. It's quite bulky, so you don't wanna use really, 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 really heavy polar fleece. I'm using winter fleece in this sample. And I got my fleece from fabric.com, but I think that it's switching to Amazon Prime at the end of July or August. Because Amazon has bought fabric.com. Just trim the edges of my elastic. And you've got a, a little bit of a hole there, which is probably good for ventilation, but you could cut a little circle of that fabric and sew that hole, sew it to the uh, inside of the hat to close up that hole if it really bothered you, but you won't even notice it. So now I'm lining up my back seams. And I'm going to pin the right sides together all the way around. So the bottom of the hat that does not have the elastic casing, it's still a raw edge, to the top of the visor piece. And I'm going to take about a 3 8 of an inch seam as I sew them together, or a 1 centimeter seam all the way around. And I'm going to just finish it off with a nice serge. You don't have to go because fleece does not unravel. But if you have a serger, especially if you're going to sell this then you want to make it pretty finish it off nicely with a serge so I have a very puffy cap now very slouchy cap but I'm gonna pull down some of the back of the hat over the visor band so that it looks like it's sort of sitting there naturally even though it's gonna be sewn and what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull some of that puffiness away from the top of the hat off to the back of the head. So I like to go about an inch away from the seam and I sew uh, a straight line across that's maybe three inches in total, so one and a half inches on either side. So that would be about, uh, say, eight centimeters in total all the way across.
you can choose how puffy you want the hat. You can definitely uh, have that um, that line up closer to the top of the hat. But I find that that's good for me. And it helps it feel more like a like a little bit of a beret, but it still gives it some shape when you do that. So I'm just going to show you that again. So and also, I if you notice on the visor of this hat, I did the um, the the top the red and black buffalo check. I did it on a 45 degree angle for the visor, and I think that looks nice too. So you can have fun playing with the fabrics. So there I'm marking about an inch down, but I could go two inches down if I wanted to remove more of the slouchiness of the hat. And here's my red and black buffalo check cap with the visor cut on a 45 degree angle. And design alert, how about adding a pom-pom to any of these hats and make them extra special? Ponytails. Use the shock cord elastic round, use a toggle. You can pull the toggle closed. You can tie the ends of the elastic in a pretty bow, or you can open it up to put your ponytail through the opening. Perfect, right? Okay, enough. Now it's time to try on the snowflake hat. Oh, I love this one too. And what's great about it is you can pull it down over your ears in the winter because of that slouchy top. And you can adjust the amount of puffiness that you want by just making that modification at the back seam. So what's not to love about this cap, right? Also the visor is gonna keep my glasses dry this winter because winter in Canada, well. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this lesson today. And if you did, please remember to like the video and also please remember to subscribe to this channel. I have a 36 year career in millinery design and production. So I have lots of tips and patterns to share with you and we're just getting started. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. And I promise that I will answer each and every one of you because you're all very important to me. If you don't feel like making this project, having just watched this video, we do have these hats for sale on our Madcap Hats website, which is www.madcaphats.com. And in the next couple of weeks, we will have a digital pattern uh, available for this project as well. Something that we're hoping to do with all of our projects that have multiple pieces. So that makes it easy for you and it'll be just a nominal charge to cover the cost of hiring somebody to do that computer work for us. Also the pattern for this hat will include a few actual little design um, adjustments that you can make and some design features like how to make this pin but I will cover things like pins and bands in another video later on in the year about trimming a hat. All right. So until we meet again, thank you so much for watching. Have a great time sewing. See you soon. Bye.